Okay, we're going to try for the Windows version here quickly of how to clone a profile in Euro Truck Simulator 2 or American Truck Simulator, but we'll be using ETS 2 for the demo. All right, so 10,000 foot overview. You make a copy of the old profile that you're cloning. You take that clone folder, you look inside of it, you take two files there and edit them to change the name to whatever you want the name of the clone to be. And also you have to change the creation timestamp. We'll go into detail on that later. And once you've done that, save those two files, you go back out, you rename that clone folder in such a way that it matches the name you gave it inside. And there you go. Okay, so of course nothing's actually as simple as it sounds at first, so you're going to need siidecrypt.exe because the two files that we're changing inside the profile, of course, are smushed up in some fancy SES encryption format. So you need something that can turn that into plain text so you can edit it. And uh, these days, the only place I can find it is in the Virtual Speditor 2 package. So that we get somewhere like this. Let's control copy that. Whoa. Do I have a browser up? Doesn't look like I have a browser up. Let's bring up a browser. Oh, give old Firefox a workout here. Okay, so if we go look at that. SCS Software Forum. We're getting Virtual Speditor. And on 137 or 138, we want basically the latest version. So you click on this link, you download it, you unpack it, you put it someplace. I'm going to skip over that happy stuff just because, you know. So let's minimize that again. Uh, so I happen to have put it over on a little utility partition, virtual speditor, and I left a copy of SIA Decrypt that I extracted from the RAR here in the main folder of that. This is the you know fairly recent version from April. And basically, you take this, uh, let's see, how does that work? You right click, I'm trying to remember my Windows isms, copy to desktop. Ah, there we are, create shortcut here. So that's what I did a while ago, and I have this to show for it. Okay, and let's see, now what's the other tool you need is something to convert between ASCII and hex string. So this is a good general purpose one that I found. Bring back Firefox. Seems to be nice and reliable and quick and easy. Of course, if you're using this guy, we don't need any spaces between the numbers. So we change that first and let's just leave that standing by for when we need it. Okay. so. Step one, make a copy of the old profile folder. All right, so for that, I'm going to oh, got to love them. Okay, start up Euro Truck Simulator here. Yeah, 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 lovely, wonderful sound effects. Okay. Let's see, I think I can alt tab in Windows. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so the first thing is to make sure that it's a local profile, not a Steam Cloud profile. So, let's see, this is the guy that I'm going to be messing with. So, to do that, you edit it, you listen to your dog tap dancing as he goes looking at the window. Okay. 
And if this little thingy here is ticked to say use Steam Cloud, you untick it and you click apply. Because basically what we're going to be do, doing is you know copying a folder that contains this profile. But if it's in the Steam Cloud, it doesn't really have any contents inside it. All the really good stuff is off in the cloud somewhere, which makes it really hard to edit it. So anyway, if you got that ticked on, tick it off, click apply, let it do its stuff. And then we get back out of Euro Truck Simulator. Okay, so that's basically what this paragraph said there. So, find the Profiles folder. Okay, well, we're under Windows, so luckily it's pretty easy. You just, My Documents, the truck simulator you're using, Profiles. So, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. My Documents. The truck simulator I'm using. Profiles. Okay. So now here we see some of these mysterious strings of hexadecimal numbers. Uh, a little spoiler here. That's what we need the uh, ASCII to hex and hex to ASCII converter for. Anyway, I know from past experience that this is the guy that I want to get at. This is this is my tester profile, so let's take this guy and we say copy. Ah, oh, there it is. Copy. And then we just paste it right back here in the profiles folder. And he says, oh, this is da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Copy. Okay, fine by me. That'll do for now. So we get in there. So let's see, where am I in my little checklist here? And we'll worry about Linux when I record the Linux version of this. So, yep, find the old profiles folder, which I just did. I'm using my tester profile, which running that through the converter says, oh, da 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 da, -da, -da. So that's the guy that I copy. So I did. Okay, so that's the first step. <laughs> Step two, edit two files inside the clone folder to change the name and the creation timestamp of the clone. So the first part of that is decrypting. These two guys down here, you'll see, I might bring up the file browser again. Um, profile.sii and profile.back.sii. The, the game engine just keeps, you know, renaming one and making a new one, renaming one, making a new one every time you open and close this profile. So if you're going to make this change, you got to make it coordinated, both of them at the same time, so that you know everything's consistent. Make the game engine happy. So, yeah, I showed you this before. You make a desktop shortcut to SII Decrypt.exe, which you know is located wherever you decided to locate it. And... To decrypt, all we have to do is, you know, we're in the copy here. All we have to do is grab these guys one at a time and just go boop. And hopefully we'll see something pop up that it did something. I hope. I don't know. And either that or it's really, really quick. So at this point... I should be able to, I hope, highlight this and edit it with a text editor. Yay! We so lucky. There we go. Well, underneath Windows, that is my favorite text editor. And we'll worry about the Linux stuff, as I said, when I do the Linux version of this procedure. Okay. So the lines I'm looking for are profile name, and creation time. Again, these have to match or the game engine will just eh. Okay. So, okay, that sounds like a good name. Let's rename from tester to this thing. So, just going to copy that since I already typed it once. 
So down at the bottom of that file, down at the bottom of this file, where it says tester. Here's Cloney. <laughs> and rename that. And notice I have double quotes around it because there's, you know, apostrophe and exclamation mark and a blank and all kinds of stuff. So you have to tell it that it's all one character string. If for some reason you wanted to have like double quotes inside the string, I have no idea. I've never wanted to. So we'll leave that as an exercise for the reader. All right. So that's one thing we got to change in both files. And now we have to change the creation time value. Hello, mouse. There we go to be different from that of any other profile you have for this game. You know, it doesn't have to be any really fancy change. You can just, you know, change the last digit or something if you feel like. The problem is if you don't do that and you start up the game and you know, you've done everything else and you should have two separate profiles, and the game engine sees two profiles with the same creation time, it just won't show you either of them. Because it's like, oh, that can't possibly happen. Oh, I'll just leave them out. There's probably a problem. Oh. So to keep him from, you know, clutching his pearls and not letting you see the fruits of your labor, just get in here and change this again consistently to some other number. So... Uh, let's see if that's, this is the number of seconds since the beginning of 1970. So let's see if we just add like 300 seconds, that's five minutes. So let's make that a five. And over here, we'll make that a five. So, yep, consistent. So let's see, file, save all. Okay, well, we can just close, close, and close. Save both files with your changes. Ooh, I'm so obedient to the instructions that I wrote myself. Okay, so now the big finish is we want to rename the clone folder to something that the game engine will recognize. So let's copy this guy here, since that's what I stuck into there. Notice I'm leaving the double quotes out. And we'll go over to the browser. And I'll stick the ASCII text in here. And presto changeo. We get the hexadecimal equivalent. So, you know, capital H is a 48. Small e is a 65, you know, fifth letter of the alphabet. Woo, clever, aren't they? Let's see, uh, there's another e. 27 is an apostrophe. 73 is a small s. 20 is a blank. 43 is a capital C, and so on and so on. And then we get 21, big finish, exclamation mark. So I take that guy, copy it, and I go back over to my file mangler. And I just back up a level here. So that's what the new name has to be for this folder so that it matches the name of the profile. So just paste that in. And pretty much at that point, you know, that's what we needed to do. So let's... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's bring up Euro Truck Simulator 2 again. And when I get the list, there should be four profiles visible in it. So we got the original tester and five minutes newer. A bit of Amy newer is here's Cloney. So now I can go, you know, monkey around with it. I don't know why these mods are not present here on Windows, but ours is not the reason why. So 
so I can you know change that. Uh, let's see, I can edit the profile. I can say, oh, it's a different guy now, and uh, he likes a different truck, and his company is not, huh? It is, woo, woo, bang, apply. But apart from that, you notice he's remarkably similar. game. We'll see if he gets upset because I think this is a profile I've been running on 138 over on my Linux partitions. So I'll have to kind of convert it back to 137. This may take a while. Or not. Who knows? As we listen to the mellow tones of the SCS Orchestra,